What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I have a super special video for you today. Today, I am in a really rad spot that I don't honestly didn't think I'd ever be here before. Uh, I am in the Arizona Ford Proving Grounds, thanks to my man here, Darren, who is also, coincidentally, the mastermind behind that trailer that's sitting behind us. It's been circling the internet, it's been all over the forums, it's been all over social media, Instagram. This is the individual that built it. He is the first one, I think, in the world to make a Bronco into a trailer. So today, Gen 6, Gen 6 Bronco trailer to yeah. be specific. Today we're gonna walk you guys through it and he's gonna kind of school us on what he did to it and why he built it, the purpose behind it, who he is. So Darren, if you wanna tell the world who you are, uh, yeah. Yep. I'm Darren Spreadbury. I work for Roush Industries and I am based here out of Ford, Arizona Proving Grounds. So you work for Roush, uh, and then, so tell me a little bit about why, how the trailer come to be, why did you build it, what, you know, what was the thought behind it, how did you get a Bronco to do it with, you know, that kind of thing. So basically I've been on the top secret Bronco program for the last four years, and um, it finally came to pass that I got a Bronco for my support unit. What I do is everything off-road with Bronco. We go out testing, I'm the main me mechanic, and I fix everything they break. And we keep I keep the vehicle running for testing. Kind of behind the scenes thing. So I received a Bronco. I tried to put in all of my tools. They did not fit, so I needed a trailer. I asked for a test unit. All of our test units get crushed. It's kind of a intellectual property thing that they do, and for safety, they take a test vehicle and they send it to the crusher, and they scrap them that way. I was able to save this trailer from scrap and make me a trailer that I could use. It matches my Bronco, that I could put all my tools in and chase Bronco off-road everywhere we go. So this Bronco was a four-door or two-door? It was a two-door, started as a two-door. Um, just by looking at the lines of Bronco, the four-door brought the rear quarter, you would call it, over more of the rear tire. The two-door brings it in front of the rear tire. So the lines were perfect for it to be cut right there. Then I had the idea of the frame and the suspension, which we'll go through later. Cool. So we're gonna we're gonna walk you through it. He's gonna kind of go over each individual you know feature, you know its capability. Uh, you know it's got an onboard fuel tank. It's got air suspension. It's got factory Ford Bronco brakes. Uh, it's got factory Ford Bronco hubs. It's I mean a lot of the components that are on the actual production vehicles he's tied over into this trailer. This is his Mach One. So we're gonna get into that real quick. Let's uh, let's jump into. Let's jump into the trailer. Let's do it. Sweet. <laughs> so Chase, it was such an honor and privilege to be able to do this build with the team supporting me saying, hey, go for it. Here's your scrap unit. Do what you will with it. So this is what I did. And I wanted it to be the best of the best in my eyes. And doing the research, starting from the tongue back, I came across these hitches and it's through Cruise Master, through Peter Sloop with Sloop Imports. Thank you, Peter. This D035 is the best hitch on the market for off-road application. Check this out. When you come up to your vehicle, the pin comes in, it's locked. That simple. You put the cap on, it's locked, it's not going anywhere. It gives you all the motion and range that you need when you're off-road, side to side, turning. Just the best hitch that I could find for what I wanted to do. And I went a little overkill with the frame. So the frame is two by six by three sixteenths wall steel tubing. Wanted it strong and durable to be able to go through the Baja. And I thought, well, I'm gonna plate the bottom of it with three sixteenths mainly because the fuel tank and I wanted to protect that. So it has 3 16 flat steel. It has gussets that are in the inside that I put so the tank doesn't belly under pressure or dragging it over rocks because we are in Johnson Valley and Borrego Springs also running around. 
So wanted this to be over-engineered from the get-go and strong. So right now, the way it sits at cruise height down the road, it gives me from the belly to the ground 22 inches of travel. The suspension that I designed was all my idea, some pictures on the internet, different things like that, but what I came up with was a three quarter inch heim joints, which are rated for 21,000 pounds each, and made my own box trailing arm to where it would be able to, one, hold the suspension, be rigid, and receive an airbag for my suspension. And I followed that up with a Fox shock. Being belt wild, we go fast through the desert, but we have to rein those ponies in every now and then. One way I did that is by incorporating the factory rear brakes from Bronco and putting them on the trailer. One feature that gives me is to be able to set your factory parking brake, just like you have on your Bronco, if I can hit a trigger and it locks the brakes. It won't go anywhere when I'm detached, which operates electric over hydraulic with a custom brake booster that's inside. Before we get into the body, wanted to touch a little bit on how we get the fuel in and out of this trailer. Putting it in is as simple as filling up your stock Bronco right through the stock filler neck, which is super awesome that we were able to utilize that. Getting it out is almost just as easy, utilizing a stock electric fuel pump with filtration and a hose and nozzle, which we'll touch on later. All right, because I'm really excited about him telling me everything about this trailer, he was mentioning a while ago that he used a two-door over a four-door because it gave you more real estate yes. between the tail light and the front of the body of, of the trailer, essentially, right? Right. So, um, and the reason that was important for Darren is because he has a lot of tools. No, so I'm actually looking at them right now. There's like 12 bins over there that tools that were in the back of this thing. How much weight is that? Probably? A lot. A lot of weight, yeah. yeah. So he needed as much real estate as possible. Uh, one, that's a huge investment to be lugging around. Two, there's a race that depended on it. Uh, and three, you know, having the extra cargo space is just beneficial while he's chasing the, chasing the race truck. Um, but, you know, he's the mastermind and just like a production Bronco, the body rides on a bushing between the factory production frame. And the benefits of that is those absorb vibration between frame and body, right? Yep. So I was able to repurpose the stock body mounts in the stock location on this frame. So we've got factory body mounts on this trailer, which is rad. Um, what else did you have to do to this thing to make this all come together here on the body? There was a little bit of, there was a lot of bit of measuring. <laughs> I, would, I would assume so. <laughs> Back and forth quite a bit. A lot of head scratching and calculations. But um, it kind of went on pretty easy when it came down to it. Yep. I was second guessing myself on a few things and not on other things. But um, when I came, I used a six inch frame for a reason to be able to fit the rear body mount and the front body mount in one piece of steel without having to add anything higher or lower to achieve the body on frame effect. All right, Darren, so I know you had limited time to build this thing. You know, what, what kind of time frame were you given for this project? So not only did, was I tasked to build the trailer, but I was also prepping the race truck. So it left me with six weeks to build this trailer. Didn't have a whole lot of time, so I kind of rushed through a few things and I know some people go like, oh, look at that or look at this, but this is what I was able to accomplish in the time I had to do it in. And this is Mach 1. And this is Mach 1, exactly. Yeah. So who knows what the future may hold for more. One piece of steel top to almost the bottom. I needed it to be rigid in the front because taking it from the donor vehicle, cutting it in half, I lost a lot of rigidity out of the body. So there are, is a piece of angle that run from side to side. I kept the factory roll cage, roll bar that's in it, and added steel to it to go from left to right, which allowed me material to 
mount the front of this steel plate to. And it's only uh, eighth inch thick. Moving to the inside, I try to keep as much of the stock interior as I could with the wall panels and the top roll cage. Wanted to be able to incorporate what I needed and with a stock setting to see if there's anything that I can prove on in the future. I skinned the whole bottom of the inside with aluminum just for mounting purposes for my tools and extra strength in the bottom of the floor. Normally you have your carpet in there and uh, padding and different things like that. I took all that out to be able to put my tools in here. With the onboard air compressor system, I created Huff and Puff. So they're via air, air compressors. I have five gallons of air storage in here, like we said, and I was able to incorporate a half inch air line to a chuck so I can air quickly other vehicles off-road, Bronco, things like that. So this is uh, pretty much the trailer in a hole, or half. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, thanks so much for showing us the trailer, man. That uh, it's, it's an incredible thing. I hope you enjoyed watching uh, the mastermind here tell us about his creation, this concept of a trailer. Uh, it's a phenomenal build, man. It's, uh, it's, it's really rad. Appreciate it's, it. Craftsmanship is just yeah. unparalleled. It's, uh, you killed it, man. Thanks. So, um, yeah. If you have any questions about the trailer specifically, drop them in the concept, uh, con <laughs> drop them in the comments, sorry. And then, uh, you know, I'll do my best to relay whatever I asked him in person. And if you want to know more specifically about it, you can message him directly. I'll put his Instagram here on the screen and it'll be in the description below. Uh, give him a follow, it's Adventure Thumpers on Instagram, right? Yep. So, uh, you know, he does lots of really rad stuff. He's obviously an incredible fabricator. Uh, he's got uh, a really rad Bronco over there too. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much, man. We'll see thank uh, you. Yeah, thanks, man. Once we'll again. see you guys in the next one.